Welcome to the Hearst Trading Room. This is our video update for the 26th of March 2013. As always, before we take a look at the markets, please make sure that you have read and understood these disclaimers. Let's take a look at the markets and here is the S&P 500 and this is the default analysis. In other words, this is the analysis that Sentient Trader is performing without me influencing what it is doing. And uh, as you can see, there is the 18-month cycle trough in the middle of November of last year. And then there was a very clear 40-day cycle over there, which warned us to expect a dominant cycle of 20 weeks. And so it wasn't a great surprise when the market was flatlined in an, in an upwards direction, uh, which is often a thing that it does when, of course, there is a dominant cycle at work. And uh, it also warned us to expect a subtle 80-day cycle trough. And um, there was that uh, subtle 80-day cycle trough uh, potentially in the markets, a very subtle trough, as you can see. Price came down for only uh, one day and perhaps a weekend into that trough. And um, then uh, following that, we would have expected a straddled 40-day cycle trough. Now, none of this is new. I've been speaking about this for several weeks. And so there was a potentially straddled trough over here, although price um, broke up quite a lot higher than the peak uh, preceding that trough. Uh, let me just clear this because I've been drawing all over it. Okay. And um, so as you can see, this is not a very good example of a straddled trough because of the fact that price came up quite a lot higher um, following the trough than it was um, uh, prior to that trough, than the peak prior to that trough. So not a very good example of a straddle trough, but not in fact impossible yet. And um, what's been happening since then? Well, last week the market did something really interesting um, from an FLD point of view. And let's zoom in and take a look at what the market did do. The market uh, bounced up and down with, uh, with a great degree of enthusiasm, but it in fact tracked along our FLD for the entire week. Um, on Thursday, it didn't quite make it up to the FLD, and on Friday, it also didn't quite make it up to the FLD, but effectively, it tracked along that FLD for the duration of the week. So, uh, what is happening now, and what should our trading decisions be? Well, uh, let me just zoom out again here. Uh, according to this analysis, of course, what we are expecting next is for price to come down into the 20-week cycle trough. Uh, here is the nest of lows um, over there. So uh, we're expecting price to come into the 20-week cycle trough. And there have been 130 bars since the trough in the middle of November. And so uh, the average length of a 20-week cycle is, of course, 136 days. And so uh, effectively within the next six days, we're expecting a move down into the 20-week cycle trough. Uh, that is according to this analysis. Now, there are several things that are um, not great about this analysis that cause us to, to raise a few question marks. In particular, this uh, really prominent trough over here. Um, was it only a trough of 20 week uh, of 20 day magnitude um, or possibly 40 day magnitude could it have been that straddled 40 day cycle trough um, well as you know I've been tracking uh, a possible alternate analysis so let's quickly um, take a look at that and see what that analysis shows us because that analysis uh, resolves some of those questions but just bear in mind that this analysis is telling us that the 20 week cycle trough is due to form uh, sometime within the next week. And so a sensible thing to do, according to this analysis, of course, would be to trade short as price crosses down uh, below uh, the FLD. So that's the message from this analysis. Let's take a look at the alternate analysis, uh, which I've called 20 week in February, because the way in which I uh, had sent in trader perform this analysis was that I pinned the 20 week cycle trough um, here in the last week of February at that very prominent trough over there. As you'll see, Sentient Trader hasn't in fact positioned the 20 week cycle trough over there, it has positioned the 80 day cycle trough. Uh, the reason for that 
are, are fairly fairly convoluted and fairly complicated. Um, in fact, it's not very important to us whether that was a 20-week cycle trough or only an 80-day cycle trough. Um, it could it could very possibly have been either. Sentient traders opted to to choose for the 80-day cycle trough in that position, uh, which is absolutely fine in terms of, of what we're doing because it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Uh, what does it mean? Well, uh, here is, of course, the 18-month cycle trough in the middle of November. That's the one thing that doesn't change at all. Uh, this very clear cycle um, over here is still a 40-day cycle, as you can see, telling us that there is probably a 20-week dominant cycle at play. So we expect the market to head up in a fairly um, uh, smooth fashion. And there will be a subtle trough of the 80-day cycle, uh, which is this trough over here. Is that a subtle trough? Well, a subtle trough can be uh, simply a, a small trough, or it could be a hidden trough, as in the other analysis, or it could be a straddle trough. Those are all examples of subtle troughs. And um, so, as I've pointed out, this is not a very good example of a straddled trough, but it is not yet impossible as a straddle trough. If price was to come down from this point, we would look back and we would say that was a straddled trough. Okay, so it's not impossible that that is a straddle trough. And so um, this picture looks uh, uh, looks fairly good so far. What's going to happen next in terms of this analysis? Well, because we know that there is a 20-week dominant cycle, um, we're expecting a, a clear move down into the 20-week cycle trough. And that is, of course, what is uh, possibly going to happen next, uh, according to this analysis. Let's have a look at the FLD and price interaction sequence, which is, of course, one of the uh, very useful things that we use to inform our analysis. And um, so if this was indeed the 80-day cycle trough or the 20-week cycle trough in the last week of February, then here was our a category interaction looks like a pretty good a category interaction and then we expect a b and c round about the 20 day uh, cycle trough and the 20 day cycle trough is expected um well it was expected last week and uh, as you can see there is a series of question marks that sentient trader has placed under this trough over here last monday's trough so it's quite possible that that was the 20 day cycle trough and uh, if that was the 20-day cycle trough, then, of course, this is our B category interaction as price comes down to the FLD. What usually happens between a B and C category interaction? Well, price tracks along the FLD, and that is exactly what happened last week. So, in fact, um, this is looking very good for a B, C category interaction. The C category interaction is, of course, uh, what happens when price breaks up above the FLD or breaks away from it to the upside. And uh, it is very possible that that is what happened yesterday. As you can see, we had an interesting day yesterday. Price um, went up, in fact, in overnight trading and uh, came down again and ended up closing at almost exactly the level at which it opened. So we ended up with with that very uh, unusual looking bar, uh, which simply has a little crossbar like that. Um, it has almost no body, the distance between the open and the close price. So, um, and as a matter of interest, that is often um, a, a bar that you see at the formation of turning points in the market. So it's, um, it's a warning for us um, uh, uh, to be a little cautious. Okay, so uh, very possibly our C category interaction was what we saw yesterday. Um, so let's just zoom in and uh, take a closer look at that and see whether it is really too late to get in for a C category interaction or could we still get in for a C category trade? I think the answer to that is no. Um, as you can see, here is the FLD. Okay, here is the pivot point or the previous trough, uh, probably the 20-day cycle trough over there. And um, the price at which, uh, uh, the point at which, or the level at which price, in fact, crossed the FLD was probably over the weekend. And it was at round about this level over here. So that's our crossing point. Okay, and so if we simply use the, the grid lines on the chart, you can see that the distance between the um, pivot or our initial stop loss in the case of a C category trade 
our pivot point and our crossing point is um, a little less than two of these um, vertical uh, grid lines one two and so we would expect a move of less than two um, vertical grid lines upwards and um, so as you can see yesterday price went up one one and a bit one and a quarter perhaps and so there probably isn't that much more um, room to the upside there might be um, and, and price could certainly go up and still give us a, a more profitable um, C category trading opportunity but um, because of the um, peculiar sort of configuration of um, of uh, price tracking along the FLD and the weekend occurring and the, the big strong move after the weekend it looks to me as if though we've missed that opportunity certainly I would not be interested in getting in at yesterday's high because of course as you know we don't get into a trade uh, within the range of the previous uh, bars trading and so um, at the at the present moment the entry into this trade would be at yesterday's high at a point of about 1560 and um, uh, the move as I've already mentioned is probably only going to take us up to perhaps about 1570 at the most and so um, there's not enough room left in that move in my opinion to make to make a, a profitable uh, trade you could of course but you'd have to be very nimble and um, so I'm not going to get into that trade so unfortunately we've missed that C category trading opportunity because it possibly all happened yesterday and it's all over so what's our next uh, trading opportunity in the S&P 500 yet again our next trading opportunity will be when price crosses down below the 20-day FLD and when it comes down to form the 40-day uh, cycle trough there's the nest of lows for the 40-day cycle trough and um, so that would be a D category short trade now you'll remember that in our other analysis the next trade would also be a, a short trade as price came down below the 20-day FLD and so uh, that would seem to be the sensible approach uh, for the S&P 500 over the next week or so would be to enter into a short trade at the level of that 20-day FLD let's take a quick look at the Nasdaq here is the same analysis effectively in the NASDAQ as you can see the 18 month cycle trough in the middle of November and uh, this has an 80 day cycle trough at the end of December 2012 and the 20 week cycle trough in the last week of February of this year um, so we, we get a good uh, clean cycle shape there for the 20 week cycle so this is certainly a very viable analysis and it's the um, analysis we were looking at a moment ago in the S&P 500 and we had a good clean A category long trading opportunity there as price bounced out of that 20 week cycle trough and what has been happening since then is uh, probably a B and C category interaction uh, surrounding the formation of the 20 day cycle uh, trough which uh, very possibly occurred on uh, last week Monday as well in in the Nasdaq so again the question in the Nasdaq is um, are, are we too late for that C category interaction or uh, is it not too late to to jump in for a C category trade um, and what is going to be our next trade well uh, let's take a look at what's happening here uh, first of all you can see price coming down to the FLD and for the whole of last week it pretty much tracked along that FLD um, yesterday uh, it, it also straddled the FLD as you can see today so far it is also still sitting on that FLD so it hasn't really broken free of the FLD now um, a long trade at this point uh, would of course project a target from this trough over here the potential 20-day cycle trough of last week Monday and the point at which price crossed that FLD um, is a little difficult to see and uh, you could interpret it in various ways but the approximate level of that cross uh, I would place over here at about 27 2782 somewhere like that and um, so how much of an upwards move is there well um, there will of course be an equal upwards move um, from the trough to the crossing point and 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 above it which means that I think the 
the upper limit of the projection would be uh, around about the 2820 level as you can see price uh, yesterday reached up towards that level it uh, didn't quite make it i'm not sure what the high was somewhere around about 2816 something like that um and uh, so it seems to me that that move in fact has already played out it's not impossible, of course, that that pr the price will keep moving up, and uh, and that we will see um, a price reaching uh, the 2820 level. The, but the important thing to bear in mind is that if price reaches the 2820 level, then the projection from the FLD, which is what we are trading, of course, then that projection will have been fulfilled. So although the market could keep moving up, the projection has been fulfilled, and um, so that's what we're trading. And so in my opinion, it's too late to get into that C category trade. We weren't given a nice clean entry. It's often the case with C category trades. Um, you could, if you had been very nimble, have got in on Friday. And um, let me show you that. You can see that on Friday, uh, um, on Thursday rather, uh, price dropped down below the FLD. And you could have uh, you could have got into that trade on the Friday if you've been very nimble. But that would have been a difficult trade to get into and um, certainly I believe it's uh, more useful to wait for the clearer more obvious easier trading opportunities to be honest and uh, so what is our next trading opportunity well of course the Nasdaq might keep going up and might uh, might fulfill its uh, target to the upside but as I've mentioned the target to the upside is a little bit limited and so again the next trading opportunity in the Nasdaq will be as price comes down below the 20-day FLD and uh, hopefully this time we'll be given a nice good clean entry a, you know a good approach towards this uh, trading opportunity and uh, so we're looking at what will probably be a, a d category short trade in the nasdaq next uh, which is the same thing that of course we're looking at happening in the s p 500. before we take a look at the euro to us dollar there's something else i'd like to point out about the nasdaq in last week's uh, video i explained um, the pros and cons, if you like, of the two different analyses that I'm tracking. Here is the other analysis, and uh, as you can see, um, I've pinned the 80-day cycle trough over there, and uh, we then had what uh, still looks as if though it is very possibly a straddled trough of the 40-day cycle. So let me um, just uh, draw in some of the salient features here. Uh, there's our clear 40-day uh, cycle, uh, indicating that we have a 20-week dominant cycle and here is then our uh, very subtle in this case pretty much hidden 80 day cycle trough over here and here is the straddled 40 day cycle trough and as you can see although the level's a bit higher um, following the trough uh, than prior to the trough it's not impossibly so and um, so this is still a very viable, uh, a very valid scenario. What's going to happen next under this scenario is, of course, price is going to come down um, into this 20-week uh, cycle uh, nest of lows over here. Uh, there's something I, I would like to point out. I was asked, uh, um, somebody sent me an email, I was asked, you know, why... Um, I considered this still to be a potentially uh, valid scenario and um, that has to do with the number of bars that have played out um, between this trough here in November and this prominent trough at the end of February. I don't know if you can see that number there but it's 102. Now 102 bars is right in between two Hearst cycles. We have the the 20 week cycle which is 136 bars and we have the 80-day cycle, which is 68 bars. 102 is right slap bang in the middle of those two cycles. So although in one of our analyses we consider that to be a potential uh, short 20-week cycle, so it's 102 days long, so it's a short 20-week cycle, should have been 136, but it came in short. Um, another way of looking at at this uh, which is something that you will often see in the markets is that 102 bars or 102 days is in fact 68 um, days which is our 80 day cycle plus 34 days um, which is of course our 40 day cycle so if you take an an 80 day cycle 
and uh, you add on to it a 40-day cycle, the average length of each one of those, then you get 102. And so for that reason, uh, we often do see uh, what might appear to be cycle lengths of, a, of 102 days. And in fact, uh, very often what they are, of course, is an 80-day cycle combined with a 40-day cycle. And uh, that is why I think that this um, analysis situation is is still very valid and is very viable. Because as you can see, there was a 80-day cycle, an 80-day cycle, uh, followed by a 40-day cycle. And um, when you add those two up, of course, you get your, your 102 bars. And um, so that gives us a very reasonable explanation for why there was a clear cycle trough at 102 uh, bars, 102 days in in the NASDAQ and of course in the S&P 500. And so I still believe this is a very valid interpretation of what might be going on. Uh, as a matter of interest, in terms of the FLD trading strategy, um, uh, if this is uh, what has been happening, let's take a quick look at our FLD price interaction sequence. Okay, things here are very murky and very difficult to identify. Uh, somewhere in there, there must be an A category interaction and a B and a C as price bounces back up again. Here is the D category interaction as price comes down below the FLD. Here is the E category interaction as price comes up above it. And what we saw two weeks ago was an F category interaction as price came down below it. What are we seeing now as price tracks along that FLD? We're seeing very simply a G category interaction. Price comes up to the FLD, crosses over it for a day or two. And what are we going to see next? An H category short uh, trading opportunity, H category interaction between price and FLD. And so um, um, here again, you know, according to this analysis, a, a short trade in the NASDAQ is the next appropriate trading opportunity. Let's take a look at the euro to US dollar. The euro to US dollar forex pair is coming down to this 40-week uh, cycle nest of lows over here. As you can see, that nest of lows is now, is now due. And you can see from these bar counts, there have been 133 bars since the most recent 20-week cycle, uh, which means that we expect the 20-week cycle trough, according to that bar count, to occur this week. Because, of course, the average length of a 20-week cycle is 136 days, 136 bars. And there have been 81 bars, or 81 days, since the most recent trough of the 80-day cycle over there. And um, so that uh, cycle trough is overdue now because, of course, it should have occurred uh, almost two weeks ago. And so um, uh, this trough is now due. And so what should we be doing? Well, we need to stand by to enter into our A category long trade in the euro to US dollar. And we started standing by last week. But as I mentioned in last week's video, we have to be cautious as we're approaching a trough of 40-week magnitude because very often the market will thrash around a little bit before it finally forms that trough. And um, so that is exactly what has been happening in the euro to US dollar. You can see there's been a fair bit of, of uh, sort of thrashing around, bouncing up and down. Um, and on Friday, uh, price came just up to the FLD, uh, crossed just a little bit above it. And that potentially would have been a point at which we might have gone long. But um, we have to be cautious as we approach a 40-week cycle trough. And uh, late on a Friday is a very bad time to enter into a trade. Okay, the markets are closed for the weekend. And um, so it's a very bad time to enter into a trade. So I certainly didn't enter into the trade um, late on Friday. Um, I watched price come up to that FLD and, um, and knew that I would have to think about it and deal with it on Monday. Um, on Monday, as you can see, price, in fact, let's zoom in a little bit and uh, take a look at uh, more detail here. Um, on Monday, price um, did, in fact, um, 
open up quite a lot and um, then it came all the way down to form a new low lower than 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 last week's lows um, that is possibly the low of the 40 week cycle trough that we're expecting it's possible um, but we've got to be very careful about jumping in um, to this trade because as I mentioned last week when you're trading out of a 40 week cycle trough you've got to be careful that you're not doing things prematurely and um, uh, you can see here this bar count 81 bars 81 bars is not very long for an 80 day cycle it's longer than average but it's not impossibly long impossibly long is when it starts getting towards about uh, about 100 bars you know that that's really long so um so we need to be careful of course i wouldn't enter today at the level of the fld um because um, I would uh, not enter within yesterday's trading range. Um, if price today remains below the FLD, then I will consider entering into an A category long trade at the level of the FLD. Um, but you must bear in mind that um, we've got to be careful. We've got to watch how the market um, climbs out of this 40-week cycle trough. So I uh, wouldn't jump in prematurely. I, I wouldn't take the first possible moment to get into this trade. I would um, I would play things a little bit a little bit cautiously, um, possibly even wait until price reaches the FLD, touches it, and then perhaps enter the next day at the level of the previous day's high. That's a, um, a, a possible approach to dealing with price bouncing out of a very prominent trough such as this. Let's take a look at the British pound to US dollar. Last week I mentioned that it was possible that the long cycle trough that we've been expecting of at least 40 week magnitude, possibly 18 months, possibly even longer, I mentioned that it might have formed the week before. And as you can see, according to this analysis, um, it almost certainly did form um, about uh, two and a half weeks ago. So uh, as you know, last week I hadn't entered as price had crossed the FLD for the same reasons that I've been discussing in the euro to US dollar. This is a very big um, cycle trough that's bouncing out of, and I didn't want to be caught unawares. And uh, what I did do was I set an entry level at the level of the previous Friday's high. As you can see, last week, uh, on Wednesday, in fact, I was stopped into that long trade, and uh, the market continued to move up a little bit. And um, uh, yesterday it uh, formed a little bit of a peak and it's been falling ever since then. So um, I'm in my long trade and um, I'm still feeling good about it. Uh, although in fact we're in a very small losing position at the moment. But what's more important is whether what's happening in the market is what we expect. And uh, it is indeed exactly what we expect. So let's um, speak about that in a little more detail. Uh, right. If this trough of the 12th of March uh, was indeed a trough of uh, a long cycle, 18 months perhaps, or 40 weeks at least, then of course the uh, interaction that we've been trading has been the A category interaction as price crosses um, up above the FLD over here and uh, what will happen next is the price should pull back down towards the FLD in a B category interaction round about the 20 day cycle trough and that is almost certainly what is happening right now okay uh, there have been 14 bars since uh, that a very prominent trough of two weeks ago and um, that's about right for the formation of a 20-day cycle trough we expect it to form sometime this week after which of course we would expect price to bounce back up again in a C category interaction now uh, because of my delayed entry into this trade um, I got in very late in the A category trade and uh, what has almost certainly happened is that the the A um, category trade uh, move uh, is complete in terms of uh, price crossing above this FLD. Uh, it would have projected to a target of about over here. Price didn't quite get there. Price is now coming down again. Uh, but because of my very delayed entry, I'm staying in this trade because I'm expecting it should kick back up again into a long C category interaction. 
and that long C category interaction I expect to be a very profitable one. So I'm staying in this trade at the moment. Um, I could do various things such as tighten my stop um, certainly to the level of this um, of this trough over here uh, because if price plunges down in that direction then clearly uh, the identification of this very major trough over here in the middle of March was probably wrong and uh, so I will be tightening my stop even though my T1 and T2 have not been hit but the reason why they haven't been hit is because I took such a delayed entry into this trade and so I'm, uh, this is not a perfect example of a trade using the FLD trading strategy. This is an example of a trade where I'm bending the rules a little bit. Um, I've identified the opportunity. I didn't get into it, um, but I waited a little bit. And so now, uh, with a full understanding of what's happening and keeping my eyes wide open, I'm monitoring the trade according to cyclic principles. And uh, so it's an example of a trade which is bending the rules slightly, but a trade which I still fully expect to be profitable. Thank you very much for joining me in the Hearst Trading Room today on the 26th of March 2013. I look forward to seeing you next week in the Hearst Trading Room. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the box below this video. And as always, I wish you profitable trading.